What is up, everyone? Welcome to Dirt to Dust. It's the Friday mailbag. First things first, let's just go ahead and get the elephant out of the room. You may notice it looks a little different behind me today. Um, we are having a little bit of technical difficulties over there. Um, so if you guys ever hear me reference that, oh, I'm in my office and all that. Yeah, this is actually, this is, this is it. This is, this is my office, uh, where all the magic happens or like thereof. And that is, that is the, uh, yeah, it usually is very magical, but today the magical fairy dust today is not, not so working. <laughs> so I think what happened was that, uh, I think the, the podcast is a living, breathing thing. And I think ever since you put the casting couch in your quote unquote studio, it's like, you know what? We need to do a little something different for the other side of this hosting duo tandem. So I think it just said, you know what? You're just going to have to do something else today. So you're going to notice me. My voice might sound a little different. The video looks a little different. Obviously, I'm in a different place. But um, the one cool thing out of this, and we're going to just go ahead and jump into it here, is... Um, I've not had a time to look at these questions. I have no idea what these questions, Caleb, what you're going to ask me. I am, I am just as seeing this for the first time cold as these, as all of our listeners and viewers are. So I'm actually thinking that's kind of cool. I'm actually pretty much looking forward yeah. to it. So, um, yeah, I say we jump right into this thing. When other people see dirt, you see glory. And when you see a vehicle for the first time, your first thought is not how pretty it is, but how much abuse can it take? This is Dirt to Dust, presented by Outlaw Off-Road. If it's anything off-road and dirty, we probably like it, and we're probably talking about it. You'll get industry info, tech talk, and interviews with the biggest and best in the industry. Let's do it. This is Dirt to Dust. And now your hosts, Doug Langford and Caleb Forbes. And welcome back to another Friday mailbag episode featuring Doug's Peasant Studio and uh, the upgraded studio on this end. <laughs> Doug, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna give you a hard time for this. One. <laughs> it's amazing! It's so good. <laughs> you gave me a hard time for the casting couch. So so I gave you a hard time for this. All right, uh, yeah. So Doug has not had a chance to uh, to look at these questions. Normally, I give him a little bit of a heads up and uh, shoot him over about five ten minutes before the episode when we film, and just so he kind of gets a chance to look over and get his collect his thoughts uh, and give us that infinite Doug wisdom. Uh, but today I'm hitting hitting them all, you know, off the fly. Uh, I've got a couple really good questions. I think these are these are solid ones, um, stuff that I've seen a couple times. But these are going to be from Facebook groups specifically. So thank you, Facebook, for I guess we're not really sponsoring this video, but uh, powering <laughs> the questions for this video. Uh, so let's get right into this. Uh, this one's from Charlotte Jeep Club. Uh, so someone said I added 35s and now my speedometer's off. I looked at the Taser, but they are expensive. Are they worth it? What else do they do other than tires? Oh, good old Taser question from Z Automotive. Mm -hmm. uh, so Taser used to be kind of the thing um, when JL when JL first came out. They were really the option um, because they they obviously did a lot more. They they were able to kind of hack in, so to speak, into the PCMs, and they could do everything from light shows to disable your TPMS. You could completely turn off your TPMS. You could alter the threshold at which the light came on you could do man and it's and over the years it's just gotten more and more i think the features list is over 200 now now most of those are stuff people mm -hmm. aren't going to use but you can do things like um tell the tell the computer that you had leds from the factory instead of halogens so you could put led lights in and it wouldn't get the bulb out warning you can as i said you can mess with the tpms you can change gear ratios you can change tire sizes you can do even the cool light shows and there's lots of options for light shows so it does a ton of stuff and i still think it's the go-to for big builds if you're doing yeah. all kinds of stuff um but then that's all relative right if you're spending 20 30 40 50 mm -hmm. 000 plus on a build what's 300 bucks it's nothing Right. But right. if you're just the guy doing lift wheels, tires, another $300 can be, you know, four five, six percent on top of an invoice. So that could be the little mm -hmm. part that's like, oh man, I'm on, you know, I just don't want to spend that. So I can see, I can see that now, nowadays, as we see here in 2024, there are other options. Um, 
For tire size and gear ratio, we at most of the Outlaw Off-Roads actually use a tool from a company called HP Tuners, which is the MPVI. There's the version two and the version three, depending on which store you go to. Um, and that is something that the customer never sees. They don't see it. They don't know it. It's not a thing that they have. Uh, we just plug in. We're able to get in there. And in some cases, the customer doesn't even pay for it. Uh, we're able to get in some of the, you know, 18 to 22 is pretty reliable that we can get into JL and JT. 23, it gets a little in. Eh, 24, we're still mm, we're working on it. Uh, but even if you have to buy credits, uh, it's still cheaper. Now, the good thing about that is it's cheaper. The bad thing is you have no physical hardware. You don't have anything as a consumer that you get. It's not like I'm going to sell you a super chips or sell you a taser or sell you something and you get it and then you can do things with it yourself. But again, it's cheaper. There are also things out there. I don't have a lot of experience with it. The J scan. Um, I don't use the J scan. I have not used the J scan on a JL. Uh, it's just not something I've gotten into. I have either, I have exclusively for now what we're almost seven years into the JL and here in a couple months, um, I have exclusively used taser or MPVI from HP tuners. Those are two really good options. Yeah. Most of the higher end off-road shops already have the HP tuners in PVI. And it's for us, it's like something we just include in like in gear jobs because a lot yeah. of shops that aren't used to doing that many gear jobs. Sometimes I've even seen customers, they don't even get it quoted and they get done with the gears and they're like, Oh, we have to sell you this 200, $300 part because we yep. can't program your gears. Because if you don't program the gear ratio, Jeep immediately goes into lint mode. You'll go to take off. As soon as it hits third gear, I think, it goes into lint mode and it puts you back yeah. in first and then you're in lint mode all the way back and you're done. Like it's mm -hmm. bad things. Yep. Um, so you definitely have to have something for that. So, um, but most of these tools, if they do gear ratio, they do tire size. Uh, I know that the dealer back originally was doing it and I think they still do it. And, but it's going to cost you about 150 bucks. A little more than that. Uh, it depends on your dealer. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. I know it costs the dealer a hundred bucks. The dealership, there's no way around it. They have to pay FCA Stellantis a hundred bucks to be able to download a file to change your tire size. But that's all you're getting. That's a one shot deal. Yeah. One time it changes your tire size, nothing else. That's it. So a lot of people mm -hmm. won't do that just because of that. Uh, is it cheaper than an HP tuners? Yeah, of course. But that's a one shot, one time deal where an HP, where an HP tuners, um, I can change your tire size infinitely if I want to. But that's me. Yeah. Then on the opposite side of that is a super chips or on the big boy side is a taser. What this guy's asking about the taser is by far a, and it's not even close. The most featured piece of calibration programming equipment out there for the JLJT for sure. So that that's kind of running your game, but a pricing there. And then, you know, you just make the mm -hmm. choice, make whatever choice is best for you as far as that goes. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. If you're just doing a tire size update, um, you know, nothing, you're not doing gears or anything like that, definitely check and see if, I mean, with this being Charlotte Jeep Club, uh, yeah, definitely check with us because if if we install the lift kit and you get stuff from us uh, nine times out of 10, we can do the programming for you through HP Tuners. But I would agree with you. Uh, Taser is the best way to do that, um, especially if you're looking at doing more things or if you, let's say you bought a... Um, a sport or a Rubicon or something without the LED headlights and you're trying to upgrade to LED, you can actually change that over and tell the computer that it's going to LED so it doesn't hyper flash. Um, there's just so many cool things you can do with that. Um, one of the coolest things I've seen though, and this is this is what is selling Brittany on a taser, believe it or not, not the fact that the speedometer is off a little bit. She didn't really care about that. It's the fact that when you can program it, then when you hit your turn signal, that it pops on your backup camera mm -hmm. on the screen. And you can check your blind spots. That one thing. She's like, I don't care about the light show. I don't care about pretty much any other feature. She's like, but if I can upgrade the tire size and turn off TPMS and do the blind spot, she's like, I'm sold. That's worth it. Um, so for a lot of people, that that alone is is a really good selling point. Um, but there's so much more, like you said, like 200 something features. So I agree. Uh, the taser is the best one. It's definitely worth the money. Um, I have not used the other, uh, like you said, J-Scan, yeah. some of the other cheaper ones out there. I used super chips a long time ago and I hated their interface. So I never went back to them. Um, yeah. So if you're hearing this, uh, give us a call at outlaw. We'll get you set up for that. Uh, this one, I got randomly added to a, uh, Tacoma group. don't know oh, why I don't know. Tacoma never have, never have owned a Tacoma. Uh, but 
I figured this was a good question, not just for Tacoma people or Toyota people, but for IFS in general. Um, it says, are diff drop brackets good or bad? Lots of lift kits out there have them, but the more expensive lift kits don't seem to have them. What's the difference? Uh, so basically a two-part question. Are they good or bad? They're good mm -hmm. for lift heights that are less than would require the replacement of an upper control arm. Um, right. So, and this, we should probably mark this down as an episode because I actually just had somebody ask me about control arms on a Toyota Tundra. I was randomly at the bike shop the other day and it's a guy that I've seen in the bike shop before. I'm a, I'm a regular at this bike shop. Uh, you can kind of tell there's actually two more bikes over there. Um, <laughs> and this guy walked in and we were talking about, uh, I don't even know what we're talking about, but he actually takes me out to his truck and come to find out it's actually a truck. This guy's bought it used, but the guy who had it before outlaw for Greensboro actually put a three inch lift on this. It was a three, nice. two from ready lift. I looked at it and I was like, man, this thing looks familiar. And I just, I kind of, I looked at the VIN real quick and I kind of typed it. In. I was like, we did this. <laughs> like this was it. I was like, I thought this looked familiar. Um, so we got into talking about control arms and whatnot and diff drop brackets. And this one had a diff drop um, kit on mm -hmm. it. So basically all the diff drop is, is it's dropping the front differential to reduce the angle of the CV axle shaft. That's it. Okay. Uh, when you lift the vehicle away, the diff goes up with the engine, the wheel goes down. Mm -hmm. So now what was straight now is like this. And you're just putting the CV axle at more of a uh, expressed angle that we try to avoid. So Toyota makes it pretty easy in there and diff drop kits over the years. And it's not just a Tacoma thing. You got them on Tundras, you got them on four runners. And obviously, yeah, you got them on Tacomas. So at lift heights of like two to three inches, diff drop kits, great. And, and honestly, you should not put a kit in there without them. It, you just really shouldn't. And it's usually like, yeah, it's we're not talking, yeah, we're not talking about a lot of drop, but it's enough mm -hmm. to save your CV axles long term. Uh, it's nothing mm -hmm. that's going to blow up your CV axle when you leave the parking lot. We're talking about part, right. part lasting and longevity type stuff. Uh, but when you get right. over three inches specifically, and most are going to jump right to three and a half, uh, three and a half. Yeah. Now we're talking about camber, which is completely different. That's the angle of the ball joints um, and and making that tire basically straight up and down, positive, negative, you know, all that kind of stuff. Then we start talking about control arms because we've maxed out camber adjustment and factor mm -hmm. aftermarket control arms. Yes, they're going to be stronger. They're going to be built with better materials, whatever. But their primary function is there's already some some degrees of caster built in to account for it being lifted. So diff drops outstanding and should be required at lift heights of two to three inches. When you go over three inches, now we're talking about um, still still not a bad idea at certain heights for diff drop brackets, uh, but you also then you got to do upper control arms. And those should be looked at separately, not, you know, we're not saying just that they are the same thing. They don't do the same thing. I'm just saying at certain lift heights, now we're adding in something else to look at. So diff drop brackets... Yeah good things or kits, whatever you want to call it. Good things. Learn. I learned something every day. That's something I wasn't really sure about. I've seen diff drops and, and what goes into that when we were installing some stuff at Charlotte, I've taken pictures of them. I didn't really understand the full concept that it was for the CVs. I thought it was more for tire alignment. So you learn something new every day. Uh, last one is, uh, it's actually a pretty common question. Um, Typically from a JL owner, let's just put it that way. Uh, what size winch do I need to go with? 9.5, 10, or 12K? Is synthetic line really that much better than steel? Because steel is obviously way cheaper. Uh, now, I should preface this with saying the person was also looking at a rough country winch. So, right, These are really good questions. <laughs> there. These are like, no, these are questions that like I get asked. Like These are, these are questions. These are good questions. So part one of that is what size should you get? Generally speaking... It is your weight of the vehicle times two, generally. Yeah. Um, that is being super safe because by that math, a Jeep Wrangler JL should have a 12,000 pound winch. By that math. Um, no. <laughs> you know, I am more of times the vehicle by two and then go down to the next size almost. I mean, like, you know, a, a, a good winch size for a four-door JL, four-door JK, a JT, all of these, um, which are over 5,000 pounds. Like, there's no doubt about that. They're over 5,000 pounds, especially in the four-doors, is going to be a 10,000-pound winch. That's a that's a good rule of thumb. So, um, you know, to be super safe, yeah, vehicle weight times two, um, 
That's a super oversimplified, overgeneralized number. If you go with that, you are 1000% going to be fine. Um, that being said, you know, like on the, um, on the worn Xeons, we ran a 12 on the race car. And in talking with Warren, they said, you know, would you, do you want to go with a 10,000 pound? And I said, okay, what's well, talk to me about the logic behind that. And he goes, well, it's simple. The spool rate's faster. It pulls faster. Mm. Yeah. Immediately. That was, that was where it stopped for me. I was like, yes, done. <laughs> done. <laughs> you know, when you go to that Pennsylvania rock race yeah. last year and we're pulled cable seven or eight times, or you go to hammer, yeah. spool rate, you know, how fast that thing spools up is, is super important. So I knew the weight was fine. That race car is probably 57, mm-hmm. 56 to 57, um, loaded up with fuel. So I knew that a 10 would be fine and, and it is. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it was just because of that, because of the motor differences and the size and all this kind of stuff that it was just a little bit faster. Uh, and it was noticeably faster. So I said, yes, absolutely. So I run a 10,000 pound on the race car. Now to talk about synthetic versus steel, um, for me, it's quite simple. If you tension a steel cable and you break it, it's a whiplash. It is. And people get hurt. People can get killed. Um, it's, it can, it can involve safety. Now, years ago, it's all we had. So you do the weighted blanket thing. You would clear the line. You would do things to kind of mitigate, um, that being a safety issue. When a synthetic line tensions up and breaks, it just falls. There's nothing to store really that energy in a straight up. Now, if it's a kinetic, that's different, but that's not going to be on a winch. Uh, there's no stored right. energy really in there. When it breaks, it just falls away. Um, especially if you have, uh, I say everything from the actual blankets to dish towels to whatever, just something keeping the weight on there. So as soon as it breaks, it just falls away to the ground and there's really nothing mm-hmm. safety there. And I, I have in racing for sure, I've definitely broken winch cables before orange lines, um, on synthetic. I've never had one whip back and hit the vehicle ever. Uh, I've never had it whip back and hit my spotter. I've never had it whip back and hit my co-driver. It just, it just snaps. The vehicle moves a little bit and it just falls away. So from a safety standpoint, Mm -hmm. um, synthetic is way better. Now synthetic is more likely to break if it is abraded where steel is not, um, steel will hurt your hand (laughs) if it's abraded. Um, but synthetic will not, but steel will hold up longer in those conditions. Uh, but steel then is subjected to, oxidation rust it's subjected to mm-hmm. it does abrade i think easier um it, it, it just synthetic is is superior in almost every way and i think it is definitely superior well above any cost differences um except in very 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 specific circumstances i i just don't even know why you would buy synthetic unless you are deliberately trying to quote unquote, cheap out. Now, if that's all you can get and that's all you can afford, okay, get it. Just know, as I've said a million times before, buy, you can buy entry level. You can buy stuff that's cheaper. Just be well aware of what you're buying. Educate yourself on the differences Mm -hmm. and understand, you know, I'm not going to go buy this cheap winch with a steel cable and go on Facebook and tell everybody you got the best winch ever, ever and try to recommend people to buy that. Don't be that guy. Yeah. You know, if he said he was looking at a rough country winch, okay, fine. But then don't let me see you on Facebook next week telling everybody how great your rough country steel cable winch is. You bought that to hit a budget. That's it. That's the only reason you bought that. You bought it for no other reason. It's the same thing with Badlands, rough country, all that Harbor Freight stuff. You're not buying it because it's better. You're buying it to hit a price point. That's it. Period. End of story. There is not a single Badlands Apex winch on an Ultra 4 race car, people. It's just not there. It's just not. Actually, there is. It, there is one. They, let, they, uh, let him use it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it oh, I'm Ben, uh, JK Gear and Gadgets. It's, he had a bad lens on his. Well, Ben would do that as a joke. First of all, <laughs> Ben is that guy. And again, if you're hitting a budget on a build, a build budget, if you're, you're only doing that to hit a budget or to be a joke, which is, which is equally now, funny. <laughs> yeah. Now I do want to say a cheap winch is better than no, Absolutely. Winch, but um, those things do tend to fail quite more, quite a bit more often. And so if it came down when to used. it, I would, 
if yeah, uh, when used, um, if that's just a paperweight on the front of the vehicle's a ornament, then Do whatever it's you totally want. Yeah. fine. Um, now, if you're actually planning to use it, or more importantly, if if you've got a half decently built JL, you're probably going to be helping other people winch, or you might be using it to recover somebody else. Um, so I would personally, if if I'm trying to stick to that budget, I would rather have a VR Evo series and a steel line to save money. And knowing that I can upgrade to cable later, um, which will come around in around the same price point as a synthetic line, Badlands or Rough Country. Pretty, fairly or, close-ish. Yeah. It's, it's, clo- it's close enough that, I mean, if someone's arguing over, you know, $100, like, you, you probably shouldn't be buying a winch. You should probably be looking at something else. Um, but for that that small difference, I would rather have a worn for one. Um and if the budget is concerned, yeah, go VR series, steel cable, and you're, you'll be fine. Upgrade to the synthetic one, you can do it. Uh, but again, a winch is better than no winch. So uh, take that with what you can. But yeah, I've, I've always gone with the one and a half times rule. Um, at least, you know, one and a half times the vehicle weight is is what the rating on the, the winch Yeah, is. it's weird math though, right? So like, and, and do remember like what you just said. Remember, cables can be, uh, winch lines can be replaced. Um, yeah. the, if you buy a VR 10, right. With the steel cable, there is literally no difference. It is the same exact winch. They just put a steel cable on it versus a synthetic. So if you want to save some money now and then ask for a synthetic line for Christmas, that's totally fine. There's no problem yeah, with absolutely. that. I think, yeah. I think winch line make great Valentine's day presents. I think they make great mm-hmm. wedding anniversary presents. Great. Uh, 4th of July presents, perhaps. You know, maybe Columbus Day, you ask yeah. for a nice synthetic winch line, whatever. Any, you can absolutely day, you yeah. can absolutely do that. But yeah, the math is weird just because, yeah. you know, if you take a JL times 1.5, it's like 9,000. So you go up to 10. Yeah. If you take it times two, it's 12,000 yeah. ish. I'm, I'm generalizing here. So you go down to 10. Yeah. So um, you definitely yeah. do not need to go over two times the weight and you don't want to go under 1.5. So I think get those right. two numbers as kind of your left lane on the bowling alley and the right lane on the bowling alley. Just make sure the bowling bowling ball stays in the middle for a strike. Yeah. See what fits in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Good guideline for sure. Yeah. Uh, Doug, that is, uh, that is all three questions. We actually got through this a little bit quick today. So, uh, that is it, my man. Well, hopefully next week and we will, if I have to get it, that it's that monitor. That's what it is. It's that monitor. (laughs) Yeah. And the problem is I think it has a King of the hammer sticker on it. So I think it thinks it's an hammers and it got wrecked on a rock trail or something. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know what's going on over there, but I'll get it figured out. We'll figure it out. Uh, I thought it was actually kind of cool. Maybe we start doing this going forward. Just hit me with the questions blind. I kind of like that. One day you're going to find one that exposes me that I actually know nothing. Like some of the people on Facebook say, (laughs) tell me, I don't know anything. One of these days I'm going to get exposed something, but. We have not hit that point yet. <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, it's there. I promise you. There is, I, there is a point which I will readily run out of talent. It happens in the driver's seat all the time. So eh, it is what it is. So uh, with that, we will end it. Like Caleb said, we got through the questions. We got them all done. Technical difficulties and all. Uh, do apologize for everybody. Not really having my, I guess, my audio and all that's not on point today just because we did have those technical difficulties. But We wanted to muscle through, get through this and make sure that you guys had the episode and that we meet the expectations of loading. Because as always, we do upload those regular episodes every Wednesday. Uh, This last Wednesday's was pretty freaking sweet with Jeremy Purick from Mob Moab. And then, of course, on Friday, we upload our mailbags and our, if we do, special little special episodes. So today was a mailbag. It was a great mailbag. We'll be bringing you more of those in the coming weeks. Uh, we did end our, uh, everybody hit it up, theoutlawoffer.com for merch for the new spotter t-shirt. We mentioned that uh, on Wednesday, that special pre-order is done, uh, but that is now live to the public. Um, so head over there, check that out and keep checking it out because we have more stuff coming. There is more stuff over there, uh, but the one that we've talked about the most was the spotters one, which actually went in line pretty well with our last two regular episodes, our episode on spotters and our episode yep. in Moab where we talked about spotters again. So as always, we thank everyone for tuning in. Be sure wherever you are, wherever you're listening or watching that you are hitting like comment, do the subscription, make sure on on, uh, hitting that notification bell on YouTube. So you know, when the rest of the episodes drop, we appreciate every single one of you 
for click and listen, wherever you get your podcast, wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. We look forward to bringing you more content next week, but until then it is the Friday mailbag. So go out and enjoy your weekend, have fun, go hit a trail, go do something, whether it's on four wheels, two wheels, maybe one wheel. I don't know. Those things are pretty cool. I kind of want one, uh, wherever it is, whatever you may do, just get outside and do something. And we'll see you on the next episode of Dirt to Dust. You've been listening to Dirt to Dust. Presented by Outlaw Off-Road. The premier off-road centers for Jeeps, trucks, and SUVs. Sounds a little bit arrogant, doesn't it? Oh, well. We hope you've enjoyed the show. Make sure to like, rate, and review. Be sure to tell your friends about the show, too. We'll be back soon. But in the meantime... To see more and to see what Outlaw Off-Road offers, hit the website at theoutlawoffroad.com. See you next time. Don't follow us. You're not going to make it.